All right, congratulations, Coach. Thank you for participating tonight. We will now begin with an opening statement from you and then go to questions. Uh, may you please use the raise hand function to indicate you would like to ask a question. When you're called on for your question, please state your name and your affiliation first. Coach, please give us an opening statement and then we'll go to questions. Well, first and foremost, uh, I want to thank God for blessing us with this opportunity tonight. Uh, I know the guys have worked really hard and uh, uh, so happy they get a chance to celebrate now. At the same time, um, I feel for Coach Few and his team because they're such class acts and Coach Few is a Hall of Fame coach and an unbelievable guy, a better person than he is coach. And um, you hate when friends uh, aren't feeling good. But uh, um, a plan was in December 5th when the game got canceled, we said, hey, if we can make it April 5th, and as I told them before the game, if we're going to lose, losing to you is who I want to lose to. So, um, so much respect for them and what they've accomplished. Our team has been special. Um, last two years winning his team in the Power Five, we've been really, really good. Uh, and they're, they're even better people. Um, four weeks in the bubble, trust me, I'd tell you if they're not. So uh, 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 that, that's what I'm going to take away most from this is thankful the NCAA gave us an opportunity to have an NCAA tournament, and then uh, thankful that uh, we were able to spend uh, this time and uh, develop our, uh, deeper relationships with unbelievable guys. And Coach, now we go to questions from the media. Uh, please use the raise hand function to indicate you want to ask a question. When called upon, please state your name and affiliation first. Our first question will come from John Warner of the Waco Tribune Herald. John, go ahead and ask your question. Well, first, congrats, Scott. Um, 18 years after taking over a really down and out program, you, you had visions of this, but what, what's it like? Uh, I, I mean, coaching is like being a parent. And Christmas time, you see the kids opening up presents, you see them excited, uh, you're excited. And to see the uh, uh, Baylor fans be able to celebrate and cheer, uh, to see uh, uh, the city of Waco be able to celebrate and cheer, to see the state of Texas. I mean, look how much great uh, uh, basketball we have from high school, AAU, junior college, college. And we haven't won a national championship since 66. So it's long overdue for the state. And, uh, uh, again, just so pleased for all of them. We have an unbelievable administration, Mac Rhodes and President Livingstone, that have given us every resource to be successful. And uh, um, the guys uh, uh, that have sacrificed for 18 years leading up to this and these guys that were able to take it home. And uh, um, it was great to see Freddie and Devante and, and uh, um, Tristan in the, in the stands. And um, we, we knew last year they really wanted to uh, have a chance to do this. And we weren't going to have any regrets with this tournament. We wanted to leave it all on the court and really blessed with the effort everyone gave us tonight. Happy for you, John. Enjoy the night. <laughs> Thank you. Our next question is from Kendall Cout. Kendall, go ahead and ask your question. Uh, Scott, obviously, congratulations as well. I wanted to ask you, with Gonzaga being one of the best efficiency teams and advanced metric teams of all time, how do you feel like your team was able to respond so well when Gonzaga cut it to 10 at halftime? Well, prior to the to the pause, we were first top three in defense and uh, most of that time number one defense in the country. And we were solid three offense the whole time. And uh, um, I know there's some let off when we came back. And then I thought we were getting it back. And I mean, we're really good defensively. And I thought uh, we made things tough tonight. Uh, Gonzaga uh, missed some shots that they probably normally make. Um, but really credit our guys for making everything difficult. Coach Jacobs uh, uh, was on their staff there and obviously familiar with the program. He had a great scouting report. Um, but credit the players then for executing it. Next question is from Chuck Carlton. Chuck, go ahead and ask your question. Yeah, Chuck Carlton, Dallas Morning News. Congratulations, Scott. Anywhere to explain the quick start, not only against Gonzaga, but against Houston in the Final Four. Why did you guys seem to be able to rise to the, the occasion to the big stage? Uh, simple, player-led team. And uh, those guys didn't want to lose for each other. They wanted to play for each other. And uh, uh, they're winners. They're experienced. They're tough. Uh, they love one another. Um, you can't always uh, uh, know if you're going to make shots, but uh, uh, that's why the offensive board is so critical. And we finished 16 to five on the offensive glass, and uh, 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 16 to five in second chance points. And uh, uh, I thought uh, Mark Vital with eight offensive rebounds was tremendous. Um, but uh, I mean, total team effort. We've had a starting rotation all year, eight guys, and uh, uh, I think that wore, wore on some teams too. Kept us fresher. 
Next question is from Myron Metcalf. Uh, Myron, go ahead and ask your question. Scott, I want you to go back to holding walk-on tryouts. Uh, what was that like to compare that to where you're at right now? Well, obviously, uh, going into every game, being 30 or 40 point underdogs and uh, half your team walk-ons, uh, uh, and 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 you know, as a coach, if we can just keep it uh, 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 close, keep it within 20 by the first half or 10. But uh, I really uh, credit those guys who won three games that year, and they laid the foundation. And those guys have uh, stayed with the program and uh, uh, helped support these guys. And that's that's what you love. Over 18 years, there's so many people that put in hard work and sweat. All our past players that constantly come. Come back in the summertime, constantly help our young guys, send them messages, encourage them. Um, I mean, it's their championship as much as ours, and that's why it's a we thing, and uh, it's a great thing for Baylor University. Our next question is from Bryce Cherry. Bryce, go ahead and ask your question. Scott, you guys uh, talked about embracing a culture of joy this mm -hmm. season, and I know joy runs deep, whereas mm -hmm. happiness is fleeting. Is it safe mm -hmm. to say – you guys have never been happier than you are tonight. And, and can you talk about how y'all reflected that yeah. this year? Yeah, a lot, a lot of joy in the locker room for sure. Um, but uh, 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 our joy is Jesus, others, yourself. And uh, it's so tough uh, uh, to put other people in, in, in front of you. And uh, teams that do that are obviously more successful. And our guys, I think, uh, um, their love for each other because they spend so much time working on their craft together. And uh, they put in the time and credit our assistant coaches for doing an unbelievable job bringing in high character kids that uh, want to be great teammates and want to work hard and want to improve and uh, they deserve all all that they're, they're they're getting our next question is from chris williams chris go ahead and ask your question coach congratulations chris williams kwtx congratulations uh, i'm in mclean stadium here in waco they were packed with students just going nuts <laughs> obviously you're like this you can't have as many people in india as you would like to but yeah. could you feel the baylor fanhood everywhere else and what can you say about allowing them to to celebrate and enjoy this with you even if they're not physically with you well i i, I look forward to seeing uh, uh, the highlights because uh, again um when 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 baylor's happy when our, our students are happy our fans i mean uh, that's what makes our, our our players and our coaching staff so proud um and again they've stuck with us uh, been there through the lean years and they deserve this uh our school deserves this uh so so happy they could celebrate um we're, we're excited to come back i'm excited to get my own bed again uh you get that warm texas weather um but uh, uh i can tell you that uh, we had a great turnout up here and i thought the fans were outstanding up here and appreciate them sacrificing uh coming up here and and, and being here to support us congrats coach thank you our next question is from dan wolken of usa today sports dan go ahead and ask your question Scott, congratulations. Um, when you look at the defensive performance of your team tonight, I was wondering if you could maybe reflect on what went into your decision a few years ago to move away from the zone mm -hmm. you used to play and uh, you know now with that man-to-man -man and, yeah. and, and the ball pressure. And How much of a factor do you think that decision was in where you are right now? Great question, Dan. Um, uh, Personnel-wise, if you looked at our teams uh, uh, in the past, we were so long with 6'9", 6'11", 7' foot across the front line. We looked like Syracuse, and now we, we have more guards. And um, My dad's a Hall of Fame coach for a reason. He taught me uh, a good coach adjusts your style to the personnel you have. And we got some unbelievable defenders this year on the Naismith. We had Jared Butler, Davion Mitchell, and Mark Vidal. And Davion won uh, uh, Player of the Year, Defensive Player of the Year. And those guys can flat out defend and guard. And uh, we want to let them get after it and we thought that would better suit our team and uh, credit to uh, uh, Coach Tang, Coach Brooks, Coach Jacobs and, and, and the coaching staff for doing a great job implementing it and uh, um, because of that uh, we've been able to be successful. Our next question is from Brian Hamilton of The Athletic. Brian go ahead and ask your question. Hey Scott congratulations kind of going off Thank that. You. Um, what kind of statement did your guards make tonight against another set of pretty good guards. Yeah, Gonzaga's un got, got some obviously unbelievable talented guards. And uh, um, one thing I tell you about our guys, though, when the best is needed, the best is usually provided. And uh, uh, as RG3 would always say, no pressure, no diamonds. And uh, our guys, uh, uh, the better uh, the opponent, the better they play. And uh, that's they, they love being the first. Um, first to win conference since uh, 1950. First to win a national championship. I mean, that, that really motivates 
against them. And uh, um, when you got a competitor like that and a competitive group like that, uh, really makes it easy to coach. Next question is from Pat Forty of Sports Illustrated. Pat, go ahead and ask your question. Hey, Pat. Hey, Scott. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, I'm curious, at the 11.45 mark of the second half, you guys were up 16, and you wrote a pretty detailed note, it looked like, to yourself on the bench. I'm just wondering what you're writing down. Uh, actually, I was going over plays we hadn't run yet. <laughs> so uh, I had to make sure I was doing a good job coaching, you know. So um, And then, and then uh, uh, I don't know if we won every media in the second half, but uh, I thought we really – if we didn't, it was close. And I thought that was really critical because uh, Gonzaga is such an explosive team and you had the lead, uh, but they trimmed it down to 10 at half and we just wanted to make sure we, we maintained the momentum and uh, really credit the guys for doing that. Our next question is from Bob Kravitz. Bob, go ahead and ask your question. This, uh, Scott, given the COVID challenges, has this been the toughest year that you've ever faced as a head coach? I, I, I tell you what, it, it, it does really uh, make you appreciative for the universities, the money they spent, and the uh, medical teams they provided, um, the players, what they sacrificed. Um, I mean, I was talking to Coach Few and – Shoot, the beginning of the year, some guys were were, were breaking up with girlfriends even because they didn't they, they 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 wanted to make sure they didn't get COVID and stayed in a bubble like atmosphere. And I mean, uh, guys not going to see family, not going to see friends, basically uh, uh, apartment or, or or wherever they're housed in the gym. And uh, I mean, they really sacrificed a lot. And uh, um, uh, I feel real blessed that they had an opportunity to play in the NCAA tournament. Um, but I think all year long when games would get canceled, uh, we really took it as a blessing when games were played. And it was really easy to motivate because when you have three or four or five or six games canceled, you really want to, for your players, you want to find games. And I want to give a, a, a credit where credit's due to all the coaches out there. I mean, coaches sacrificed and did things scheduling-wise they normally wouldn't do, but they wanted to help their players have this opportunity. I mean, they're only in college a few years. And uh, uh, some will go play professionally, but most of them, this is the end of their basketball career. And to be able to have opportunities when you work – 10, 12 years to get to that position to play college games. Um, as a coach, you want to – I mean, that's why we coach, to see our players have a chance to be successful. And uh, um, so I know that's a really long answer. I'm just saying how pleased and blessed we all are that we played games, had this championship, um, and I'm speaking for the players and the coaches. Thank you. Next question is from Curtis Keehan of KCAN TV in Waco. Curtis, go ahead and ask your question. Scott Curtis Quillen, Channel 6 in Waco. Um, the last time you guys played Gonzaga, you weren't quite close to this form. Then you go on that 23-game win streak last year. You win it all this year. What changed since you played uh, Gonzaga two years ago in Salt Lake City? Well, it, it, when they were in Salt Lake City, I mean, they had several pros that aren't on the team now. And we had some young guys that were uh, able to improve, get better. And then we had some guys that were able to come in or, or were sitting out in red shirt and were able to see, uh, man, this is how hard we have to play and how much we have to improve to get to their level. And uh, iron sharpens iron. Playing great teams, uh, um, it hurts when you when you lose, but it it, it gives you um, a direction as far as where you have to get better and how much you have to improve on. So uh, I credit uh, Coach Fuse always scheduled uh, really tough, and we've had a lot of games with them, and uh, um, that's made us better over the years. We've scrimmaged them, and that always makes us better. The next question is from Jerry Hill. Jerry, go ahead and ask your question. Jerry Hill, Baylor Bear Insider, Scott, congrats. Um, Drew Timmy had had a great run in the NCAA tournament, a bunch of games over 20. What did you – I mean, he still was five of seven, but what did you guys do to maybe keep it away from him and, and really defend him? Well, first he was coming in the game, I think 19 assists, five turnovers if, uh, for the NCAA tournament or close to that. And tonight we forced him into five turnovers and limited him to 12 points. He's a heck of a player. Um, and we knew uh, we just couldn't let him get the ball because if he got the ball, it was a problem for us. So uh, credit our guys for really having great ball pressure on the perimeter and really trying to limit his touches um, because if he caught it, we knew we were going to be in trouble. And uh, he's been uh, great to watch. We recruited him, uh, love his parents, uh, uh, and Coach Hughes done just a great job with him and happy for his success. Thanks, guys. Hey, 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 are you dancing tonight, Jerry? I want a video. <laughs> Tomorrow when you get back. Okay. Our final question is from Jeff Goodman of uh, Stadium. Go ahead, Jeff. Hey, Scott, congrats, man. Congrats, first of all. Um, 
what what does this mean for you personally uh, mm-hmm. with everything you've kind of gone through in the industry? You'd outwork guys for players. Mm-hmm. They'd say you were cheating. Then they said you couldn't coach when you got top players. Mm-hmm. What, what does this mean? I know you're putting on the players, but mm-hmm. what does it mean for you personally? Uh, per- personally, uh, um, Jerry Colangelo uh, talked to my brother's team, and, and it was such a great message. We wanted to give it to our team, and that was um, uh, he had been there with the Suns, with the young franchise, and then he thought they would be back, and it was 17 year- years later when they got back, and you don't get these opportunities often, and when you do, you got to make the most of them. And I thought we were really on a mission to make the most of it. If we had a loss, we wanted to have no regrets. We wanted to leave it all on the table. Um, I can tell you in the coaching fraternity, getting to a Final Four, um, very similar to winning a national championship. There's usually some luck that goes into that. Um, and 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 we didn't even have to be lucky because uh, our guys were so dominant this entire tournament. I'm, uh, I don't know uh, what the lowest margin was, but nothing was one or two possessions. And uh, um, uh, that just speaks volumes to them. Uh, but, but as a coach, you, you never know when you're going to be able to get to a Final Four National Championship, so you want to take advantage of those opportunities. And to me, it never defines a great coach if you – just like there's so many players, NBA players, never won an NBA championship and great college players that never went to a Final Four um uh i've i've i value coaches uh do they make their players better um spiritually uh academically character wise uh are you preparing them for life we call it champions for life at uh, baylor so um really blessed that we were able to get to a final four and win a national championship because they're hard to do um again i know that's a long answer uh but that's really my my, my thoughts on it because there's so many coaches that are that are great coaches that just haven't had that opportunity yet and doesn't mean that they're not successful at all Thank you, Coach. Thanks, Great tonight. We'll be joined momentarily by Jared Butler. Please use this time to raise or lower your hand as necessary. Hey, Jeff, it's great that uh, we could hear your question tonight. Way to get that fixed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got it done. I got it done. Thank you. Take care. <laughs>that's the end of the season ah, that's crazy we're now joined by jared butler please use the raise hand function to indicate if you'd like to question ask a question when you're called on for your question please state your name and affiliation first uh first question will come from jerry hill jerry you want to go ahead uh jerry hill better bear insider uh jared congrats um can you just take me through that start of the game i mean you guys just came out on fire and kind of took it from them. Yeah, the start of the game was tremendous. Um, I know I didn't, um, Adam didn't, Mark didn't. He, we didn't look at the scoreboard. Like, we were just going out there and giving it our all, and uh, we were just going to let the, you know, um, the combos where they where they fall. And um, I looked up at halftime, we're up 10. I knew at some point we were up big because I was just like, we're scoring, they're not scoring. And, um, you know, everybody was hitting the shots. It was like nobody's going to miss, but um, – it's just electrifying, especially in that type of moment in a big game, you know, and, and everybody stepped up. Like, everybody was, you know, on on clicking on all cin- cylinders. Like, that's that's what it takes to win. So, it's amazing. Thank you, Jerry. <clears throat> Our next question is from Bryce Cherry. Bryce, go ahead. Bryce Cherry, Waco Trib. Jared, uh, you know, just as critical, it seemed, was the way you guys started the second half. I mean, Gonzaga had cut it to 10 by halftime, and you guys – really came out and kind of pressed the accelerator down. I mean, was that, you know, a message at halftime? Yeah, that's always a point of um, emphasis for us. The first five minutes of that, of the first half, um, it's so important. You know, these type of games, these games are second half games, you know, like early leads don't mean anything. And um, we looked at it like 0-0 and we knew they were going to fight. You're a talented team. So they're never out the game. And, um, you know, that first five minutes was pretty crucial. Next question is from Kendall Count. Kendall, go ahead and ask your question. Kendall, what's up, my guy? <laughs> uh, Jared, uh, I really appreciate that, man. And obviously, after three years, I've probably asked you everything I can yeah. do to, to know. So we'll make it more generic now. You've won a national championship. You're the most outstanding player at the Final Four. What the heck is it like to have those achievements for you? Man, um, I'm not trying to preach a prosperity gospel, but um, <laughs> our Lord and Savior, um, I say it all the time. You know, he gets us through everything. 
um, Jesus Christ, man. He's the truth, and um, he was with us tonight. He's with us all season. He's with us wherever we go, and um, it's, he just sustained us. You know, he brought us together. He brought this team together, transfers, people from us overseas. Like, it, it's just tremendous how it just comes, and it comes all full circle, and um, it's just amazing, man. It's just, you know, you can, put, you can do anything you put your mind to for sure. Our next question is from John Warner of the Waco Tribune Herald. John, go ahead and ask your question. Yeah, hey, Jared, congratulations. Yeah. Um, you, you guys have had a dynamic offense all year, but y'all really cut down on turnovers. Y'all averaged less than eight per game throughout the NCAA tournament. Was there a special emphasis on that, or what happened there? Yeah, that was. And, um, you know, we have, like, three keys where, you know, we try to have 11 less turnovers a game. And, um, you know, with, with, uh, with the guards we have, it's, it shouldn't be a hard thing to do, you know. And uh, we, that's always a point of emphasis. You know, we'd rather get a shot up than a live ball turnover. We'd rather get a shot up than, you know, forcing it. So uh, that's, that's always a point of emphasis for us, especially us being, uh, you know, so guard heavy. Thanks, Gary. Next question is from Mandy Knight of KWKT Fox 44 TV. Go ahead, Mandy. Mandy Knight, Fox 44 TV in Waco. Congratulations, Jared. And uh, I'm wondering, you know, 30 years from now, when you're looking back on this team, what are you going to remember outside of the basketball? Uh, maybe the relationships and how this team, you know, you all loved each other. Yeah, it's really like a family. When I talk about a family, like group of brothers, like after 30 days in the bubble, like, you know, you start to like not want to be around each other. Like, you know, you're on dudes all day. It's just like hard. But um, I don't know how we got through it. Like we got through it. We loved each other. We played so many games of Connect Four. Um, we played cornhole. We ate together. You know, watched movies together. We did everything together, and uh, that's just a really cool thing. I'm gonna remember that probably more than winning the championship. You know, um, they're just great guys, great people. So that's what I'm gonna remember for sure. Our next question is from Brian Hamilton of the Athletic. Brian, go ahead and ask your question. Hey, Jared, what kind of statement? Did you think you and Maceo and Adam and Davion made to Yeah, uh, we say it all the time. We think we're the best guards in the nation. And uh, we went up against some highly touted guards. You know, they're, you know, explosive. And they have Drew Timmy. And, uh, you know, we, we want to be the best guards in the nation. And uh, I think we proved that tonight. We made a statement. And, um, you know, it's just the, the best way to do it on, you know, national TV, you know, um, NCAA tournament championship game. Like, it's, it's amazing to do it. Our next question is from Kevin Longquist. Kevin, go ahead and ask your question. Yeah, congratulations, Jared. You know, for you, you kind of struggled shooting the ball going into the tournament. Was there a different mindset or preparation for you going into these potential two games about how you had to maybe turn things around? Because you were obviously outstanding on this, and congratulations on the MOP. Yeah, um, I was struggling all tournament, um, I think, probably until the, the Final Four. And... Um, you know, as a shooter, like, it's hard. Like, it just makes the days just longer, and you think about it all day long. And um, But I, I knew, like, I couldn't, I couldn't go the whole tournament and not shoot well, and um, that's what I was just holding my hat on, and I knew, you know, God was going to, you know, allow me to make shots eventually. And, um, you know, I just trusted it. And my teammates found me. They kept feeding me the ball, telling me to shoot the ball and stuff like that. So that, that I'm just glad it came at the right time. You know, I'm glad uh, I was able to shoot the ball well these past two games. That's about it, yeah. Our next question is from Melinda Adams. Melinda, go ahead and ask your question. Hey, Jared, it's Allison Williams from ESPN. Um, how would you describe what it was like to, to have this success in this type of year with everything that's been asked of you guys and, and everything you've had to sacrifice? How does that add to the feeling of winning a championship? Yeah, um, I think it's harder to win it in this year than, than ever before, you know, with the stoppages and uh, you know, testing and the sacrificing your social life just so you can play basketball games, um, having no fans sometimes. And it's just hard to get up for sometimes for these games. And, um, you know, I'm just so thankful that we, are, we were able to play and, um, you know, the tournament still go on. So um, it's just it's just really cool to say that we did that in the, in the midst of adversity, in the midst of, you know, tribulations. And, um, you know, to bring it home for Baylor, it's, it's amazing. And our next question is from Darby Brown. Darby, go ahead and ask your question. Yeah, hey, Jared. Uh, just curious, you know, with everything that um, has happened as, over the last, you know, the tournament's canceled last year, and then you're able to play this year. And just 
you've had the vision of being national champions for so long, but was there ever a moment that you didn't believe? Uh, ever a moment I didn't believe? Um, I don't think so. Uh, but I think when we all decided to come back, I was like, yeah, we definitely have a chance to be the best team ever at Baylor, the best team, you know, first team to make it to the Final Four. Um, you know, when you have a goal for that that long, like you just, you know, we, we all knew the goal. Like everybody knew the mission, and um, I think everybody sacrificed for it, and I think that's why we're, we're here today. And um, just, whoo, I'm just so glad everybody came back. You know, we got the band back together, and we won it, so that was cool. Got to make a movie out of it. And our last question is coming from Danny Thompson. Danny, go ahead and ask your question. Jared, Danny Thompson with Three Point Conversion. I guess I'll, I'll be the last person to say congratulations on winning the national championship. Yeah. Tonight, you joined Ratified Air. You're the first player since 2003, which was Carmelo Anthony, to have 20 points and seven assists in a championship game. To be recognized with someone like Carmelo Anthony, how does that feel for yourself? And what does that do for you as you now get ready for the next process, the next part of your career? Uh, you know, it just, I think it just lets me know that, like, when I worry about my future, when I worry about, you know, my next move or am I going to be able to do this? Like, am I going to be able to, you know, um, play this well, perform this well? Um, it just, it just, it, it just gives me confidence to know that God's got it, you know, all planned out. And um, all I got to do is, is just adjust to his plan and, um, you know, and let the chips fall away in May and just give it my all and um, just cut out all the worrying because there's no reason to worry. You know, just look at what he's done in my life and uh, where, I've, where I've come. It's, it's just all come full circle. And, um, you know, it just, just lets me know that I, shouldn't, I should never not trust him in any moment, you know. Thank you, Jerry, for your time. Yeah, appreciate y'all. Media, that's it for tonight. Full transcript will be provided by ASAP Sports at www.ncaa.com slash transcripts. You can also find a recording of this press conference in the NCAA Digital Media Hub at www.ncaa.veritone.com.